I've got three hours of sleep. And can't remember that long. So as I veer off, just pull me back in. Pull me back in. Wrong side of the road. I was actually really excited when I got the opportunity to do this, Derek being away. They said, we want to get the person who's got the most experience in this particular topic. I went, oh, what's the topic? Derek said, coffee. Oh, thanks, Derek. Oh. Notice my wife is mysteriously sick. On the day that I'm going to be lecturing about conflict management. Anyway, <clears throat> anyway, so uh, I thought at first I wouldn't have to study because if I was just teaching on conflict, I've got that, I've got that, right? But we're actually going to be talking about <coughs> conflict management. So we're talking about this, uh, the, 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 this, it's called the third alternative, it's kind of the uh, concept to what we're going to run with. Uh, so this is a way of solving tough issues. Um, when we come to the real loggerheads, this is a technique that we can use to uh, to uh, get breakthrough, but more than that, to actually achieve uh, really, really cool uh, goals. This is a, a great little tool if you can grab it. In my head, it runs like this. It's not your way. It's not my way. It's a better way. Right? So that's this little thing that helps this, this uh, third alternative sit in my mind. So I'm going to explain it <clears throat> and then what we'll do is we'll break into two groups. I'll give you a scenario. Yeah? One group will have uh, the, 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 the positive side, the other the negative side, although that's probably not the best way. One group will have one viewpoint and the other group will have the other viewpoint. Uh, you're going to break into those groups, you're going to go, okay, cool, this is what we think should happen, all right? And then we'll work on working out how to implement this idea of the third alternative. So most conflicts have two sides, yes? Yeah. yeah. So we're used to thinking in two ways. It's my way or my team and your way and your team. And of course, my team's right. That's the usual way we do things. It's I'm right, I'm always right. So if my team is good, your team is bad, my motives are pure, your motives are questionable at best. My team is just, your team is unjust, right? So remember, we've got to get ourselves into a place of different point of view. So we're thinking when we're in a conflict with somebody, we're discussing it, we're not getting to any conclusion, we're just this is my way, this is the way it should be, uh, that's your way, and you think that's the way it should be. So you with me so far? Yeah. You guys want to go home, I want you to stay. It's a good one for this time of night, right? <laughs> okay, so just keep, think, keep thinking on, the, on those lines and we'll, we'll, this will be a good class. <laughs> so we're used to, so used to thinking our way is the most effective way and it's the way that it should be and it's my way and it becomes subconscious, right? So the way we think is the right way is our subconscious point of view. It's the way that we will run things and it's we, we take ownership of that. So everything becomes, I like for Christy and I, she's not here so I can talk about it. We have this thing, she'll say, I'll say, oh, um, where's my shoes? And she'll go, they're in my room. And I go, whose room? she goes, go, in my room. That's not your room. It's my room. In actual fact, it's our room. But we say, this is just the default setting that things are mine. It's my child, it's my party, it's my team, it's my country, it's my opinion. And it's my opinion against your opinion. So, <clears throat> in each, each case, there's two alternatives. Mine and yours. Right? So we've got to really get to, to grasp this concept as we move into this third alternative, we have to um, start thinking less about the, the, the conflict itself and winning and more about the fact that we put ourselves into positions of me versus you or my idea versus your idea. You with me so far? Yeah. So almost everybody on the planet thinks this way. That's why we have um, Trump against Hillary. Labour against liberal, children against parents, rural against urban, 
environmentalists against developers, white against black, religion against science, buyer against seller, plaintiff against defendant, spouse against spouse, believer against non-believer. It is why we have racism, prejudice, and it's why we have war, yeah? Mm. It's all to do with my way, your way, and the conflict between, between those two. So each of these two alternatives, generally speaking, are deeply planted within us. So when we come up with a concept, we come up with a way that we want to do something, and we're arguing with somebody about it, it's, we, we, we are held to it, we are biased to it. It is my way, and I want to do it my way, and it just sits with us and stays in our head. We can't get rid of it. We have to keep arguing and arguing and arguing. Now, they're not necessarily wrong or right, so we need to remove wrong and right from the equation when we're trying to come to some kind of re resolution because wrong and right doesn't always wash. So take this one, for example. Uh, the mindset of the environmentalist, uh, generally speaking, as far as I'm told, is, uh, is formed by an appreciation for the beauty of nature, yeah? So loves it, loves the nature and everything about it, and the flowers and all of that stuff. Whereas the mindset of the developer, the building developer, is formed by a desire to see communities grow, and of course, uh, an opportunity for economic growth and increase, yeah? yeah? Which one's right, which one's wrong? Neither, I guess. They're just two points of view, they're two mindsets. Yet, these two fields clash constantly, constantly over what should be and what shouldn't be, what's right and what's wrong. So these mindsets also end up being these deep uh, roots, if you like, which become planted in our mindsets, so much so that it becomes who we are. So um, if you're an environmentalist or, uh, um, you're a Christian or you're a teacher, it's not, it actually comes away from uh, just what you believe and what you talk about, it becomes who you are, yeah? So we become these mindsets. So I am this, therefore it must be right. Therefore if you're not it, you must be wrong. Yeah, you with me? So these deep planted mindsets are entwined and entrenched in every part of our identity. <clears throat> so when we uh, come into a conversation, we attack because we feel attacked. So if somebody disagrees with it, they're disagreeing with our whole uh, identity and who we are, what we believe in and what makes us, us. So we need to learn how to, uh, essentially to separate emotion from argument, separate emotion from idea and then look for this next phase, this next alternative, which is pretty difficult. Because getting past the two first ones, which is my idea, your idea, is uh, very hard to do. And generally speaking, we end up frustrated and annoyed. So remember, we're not talking about right and wrong. We're talking about my idea be your idea and how do we come to a conclusion. Now, not a compromise. This, this concept of the third alternative is not about compromise because in a compromise, we, tr we try to spin it in a positive light. We go, oh, we compromise, everybody wins. Well, everybody wins, everybody also loses. Because <laughs> if I only get a bit of what I want, then there's a bit I don't want, right? So a compromise, everybody's gonna lose something. But in this third alternative, everybody wins, right? It transcends, it's a better idea. In this book that I've been reading about, it talks about it, it, it describes it as finding synergy, which I don't know, just reminds me of my bills more than anything. <laughs> but they call it synergy and working through a process of synergy. So I've just said that synergy is not a compromise at all. Uh, synergy basically says, uh, when, when you look at the definition of it, uh, the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. So when we're working in synergy, what, what is is bigger and better, 
what we come to is better than what it could have been individually. So I was looking at this and, and sort of a way to try to describe it on a Tuesday night late when everybody's tired. Yeah. Um, and, and I was looking at some, some metal, which is really boring. But anyway, we'll run with it anyway. So there's this example of synergy and how when we come to synergy, uh, it becomes uh, something better. So one of the examples that I thought I'd throw out there is they say that birds, and now I'll get back to the really exciting one about the metal, they say that birds, when they fly in this flying V, you've seen the V formation that they fly in, that they'll fly almost twice as fast than they would on their own. So essentially that's a form of synergy because they're working together uh, to create a common goal with a new idea that actually takes them beyond what they could do in the first place. So that's the same as this third alternative, is coming to a place where it is actually a better, uh, a better answer than what we could have had in the first place. So if we had compromise, compromise would be uh, my idea plus your idea, so one plus one equals two, whereas synergy will be uh, one plus one equals 10. It's this kind of a, a mindset. <clears throat> so the, the other thing I was looking at, if you picture a machine, and this is the most boring example, I don't even know why it caught my attention. Imagine a machine that can break uh, metal, right? So it's run on pounds per square inch, so PSI, <clears throat> and, and it will register the breaking point, right? And I was looking at a chrome bar. Uh, a chrome bar will break at 70 PSI, uh, and a nickel bar will break at uh, 80, 70,000, but it's a bit quicker to say 70 and 80, 80 PSI. Uh, I go, okay, so if you combine those two things together, then their breaking point's 210, right? Well, no. Actually, when you combine those two things together, their breaking point actually increases to 300. And it's kind of like a, how does that even work? That doesn't make sense. And that's the point of this whole synergy, this third alternative. It's not a compromise, it's not one plus one, it's not your idea or my idea, it's a new idea. It's something bigger, it's something better, it's something we wouldn't have thought of on our own, but together we come around it and it works better. And this is this concept for conflict management. When you're at a loggerhead, you're at a position where you can't seem to get forward or back, you both want your own ideas going, that's when we introduce this third alternative in order to try to <coughs> create some kind of synergy. Now that takes a little bit of effort because that means that we have to go, I'm gonna scrap my idea and I'm gonna trust that you're gonna scrap your idea and together we're gonna come up with an idea. Yeah, same topic, same situation, same thing, but we're gonna do it together in the hope that this all pans out and we end up with something better than what we could do on our own or individually. Yeah? Everyone with me? No, it's tired. So what are some examples of this, what I've just sort of described, what works in a, in a synergy way? There's a few things that we see all the time, especially in church life, but, but all the time that we see that the parts on their own wouldn't be anywhere near as powerful or as good as they are when they're together. Worship band. Worship band, very good. Music is an unbelievably good uh, analogy of this concept of synergy. So you're talking about harmonies and melodies and working together. If you pull one of the people out and say, oh, just sing that, you're like, okay, stop singing that. <laughs> right? You pull two out, you're like, oh, it's a little bit better. Three, four, you're like, wow. This angel singing, what's happening here? Do you know what I mean? Like you think about the individual instruments that play, if you're just listening to one, you might hate the sound of a saxophone, but when it's accompanied by the orchestra, all of a sudden, it's heaven on earth. It's, it's something, something changes, it's something different, and that's this concept. Any other thoughts? Sporting team. Great, another one, don't like that, sporting team. Sporting teams are the same, you can have somebody who just okay, you know? Like I might not be very fast, I might not be very bothered, I might just be good at one kick. <laughs> but the only way I can do that one kick is if the rest of the team do their one kick to put me in the position to do that one kick. Then the team wins, yeah? yeah. So this is the idea, this is the, 
the, the thought process uh, behind this synergy, the third alternative. So the takeaway from this, and, and uh, we, we'll run through this in a second and, and have a crack at it, <coughs> but the, the takeaway is when, it, this is not just about ministry, this is a lot, business, a home, uh, <coughs> any area of life. If you can get in your mind to come to a place when you hit a brick wall with somebody and you can't get past uh, the my way and your way, if you can stop and go, hang on, there's a third alternative. It doesn't have to be my way. It doesn't have to be your way. It can be our way. Right? If you can get to that place, then with these little examples that we've seen, it would suggest that that's if we can get it, if we can make it happen, which is difficult, it's not easy, but if we can make it happen, then the third way, the third, al the third alternative is, is remarkably better than what, what we could have possibly come up with in the first place. Yeah? Okay, so let's uh, let's go into, into two, two teams. Who do watch this before? So, um, Jace, if you want to flip over with that team. So, right, here's the, here's the idea, and I'll get you all to pull in and you'll, you want a little scribe. What I'm going to get you to do is we're going to talk about, um, we might do this twice, but we'll, we'll, we'll see how long the first one takes. What we'll do is we'll go, um, the worship music at church, right, the, the, the loudness of it, all right? So... You guys will, will be um, four, right? You, you guys like how loud it is. Um, and, and the fact that um, numerous people have complained and, and said it's too loud and my baby cries and, and all of that stuff. But you guys are for it. So your argument is, is how, how we continue to keep our music at the level that it's at uh, and maybe increase it. Now your guys' team is is the against. Uh, there's an age bracket here, but, <laughs> <laughs> but then you guys are uh, uh, the, the the music is really loud. Uh, it's affecting people, uh, so obviously we need to come up with some ways and conclusions on how to how to how we fix that, what we can do that, that how we can get around that. And obviously these guys are doing the, the opposite of that. Yeah. No, 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 you guys are supposed to be, um, what's going to happen here, you guys are getting your arguments ready, right? So we are going to create conflict. Release the Holy Spirit one. So you guys need to get an argument, and you guys need to get an argument. You should be on the other side. I'm young. So you're not going to argue that we get it down. You have to argue in your team, you can't be the devil's advocate. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry if all their ears can't handle the noise. You'll have time to present your argument. No. She's not gonna start if you want to find the Milky Way. Hey, what's the other biscuits? What's in them? Caramel. Is it caramel? Mm, it's caramel to scotch. Yeah, we know that too. Um. Yeah, we've got a, we've got a secret oh, okay. weapon. We got armor. <laughs> okay, so who is the uh, the the spokesperson? Sean Jr. Sean Jr. Sean, Sean Jr. Sean Jr. <laughs> <laughs> Not so, to this one. so Sean will be uh, Sean's to go here is alternative one, the first alternative, right? First option. Are you ready, Sean? <coughs> Just one more. Did you find it for me? You're not ready? Yeah. yeah, we are ready. Okay, you are ready? Definitely. Oh, yeah, I'm open. I can say something. Well, if you want to say something, say it loud. The dead hand is holding the roll. He's going to wrap it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I thought about it. Come on, friend. Come on. So, uh, strengths for loud worship. People won't fall asleep. You tend to find a lot of older people fall asleep during slow boring, low music. You're getting filmed, you know that. Hi. <laughs> oh, that's hard. <laughs> Remove distractions such as IE, screaming kids, babies. 
That is all the nonsense. Opinion. Do we need to allow them to talk him back or...? Yes! Yes! What, what would be really good is when he's actually making his points, right? So we'll allow Sean to go through and give his little thing. If you have any notes to take down, take them down. Then we'll flip over to oh, the second alternative. Oh, you guys will give yours, and then you'll, at the, the end ones. of that, you'll have the opportunity to then rebut. Yeah. And then they'll rebut. Then you say, it, it, like it, it has a real <laughs> creative <laughs> element to loud music. Like, it really brings yeah. this new atmosphere. <laughs> Right, you know, Boom. Like it just it just pulls the Holy Spirit from level one down to like down 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 and um, <laughs> you know, there's actually some there's actually some biblical verses about loud worship. So <laughs> if we go to Psalms 150, verse five, praise him with the clash of cymbals. Praise him with resounding cymbals. Clash, loud, bang, big words, loud. We already have cymbals in worship. <laughs> and uh, and for, for the older people in the congregation that like to complain, we offer earplugs as a way out. And <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a way out. Yeah, it is a way out. <laughs> and, and it's uh, an easy option. It's um, affordable. We, 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 we offer uh, the little, the really cute, the little, 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 little cute baby earmuffs. They're so adorable. Yeah, so yeah, pink ones. Do you want those? Shh, we should do it. And um, last out, you know, just a shout out and praise to God. It's, it's, it's loud. It's passionate, it's fiery, it's on the bottom of your stomach, Al. It's not loud and like, like a fart. It's, it's like, like, I love you, Jesus! Like it's loud. Oh man. Oh, man. We should have stuck with Sean. We should have stuck with Sean's check. Okay. Anyway. Done? We've lost it. Yeah. Oh man. <laughs> Well, remind me never to get uh, Sean on my debates team. <laughs> you, get, you get three you minutes, two and a half minutes of expected. Okay, so who's our, uh, our our spokesperson for? You know, some of the people in the church have, have, have complained about the loudness. <laughs> The glasses and the fancy name aren't going to get you anywhere. Fancy <laughs> name? <laughs> Roberto. All right. So let me start off by saying that your reference to loud music being the Bible was incorrect. Um, it just depends on music. And we're not disputing that music should not be there. He just went with his posture. <laughs> <laughs> we are saying that um, music is definitely biblical, um, but we're saying it needs to be at a reasonable level where it can be appreciated. Who needs to praise God? We also. Yeah. Who needs to praise God at a reasonable level? Excuse me, let me have my, have my time. Um, now, traditional churches didn't have amplification. Oh. Amen, Next, brother. Praise was able to be sustained. Oh, and obtained. Oh. What we need to understand, <laughs> what we need to understand, is that loud music is a distraction because people will come in and they will hear loud music and they will not be able to connect. We want worship. We want the music to be a, a focus on the worship, not the focus on the music. Worship is about worship and praise. It's not about a performance. <laughs> Savage. I love it how he's doing it. Jumping and dancing, <laughs> if, if we're here for the music, for the jumping and dancing, then we're here for the wrong reason. Oh, 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 because we have a technician <laughs> that over 95 decibels over a long period of time is damaging to your ears. That's true. We talked about that at church last week. So we're saying that that's true. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> so we need to say, and we have a responsibility, a duty of care to look after our congregation. And if we don't do that, 
then we're not caring for them. And, and we are the church of care. Um, we and we have to look after a wide congregation. This isn't a church of 15 year olds. Oh. This is a church that goes from zero all the way up to a hundred and zero. Yeah, but older people. So we have to make sure all are catered for. So this is the reason why we're saying a reasonable level of music and sound and level of the sound is the way we're going to be. Qualified. Thank you very much. Yeah. Well, I mean, I wasn't going to decide on who you won, but you guys got owned. I got, <laughs> I got some stuff to say. Okay. Got, Sean, get out. Get somebody else no has got something to say and we'll run with it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. This is a very <laughs> well chosen part. Yeah. Yeah. The voice. What have you done? The quiet voice. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the, the quiet voice. So I have a few rebuttals. Oh, Jace. Oh, 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 o